And welcome to Education, Leadership, and Beyond, Surviving and Thriving. My name is Andrew Murata, host of the program. It is show number 107, and welcome to the program. We're here in the home studio. It's Friday night. Happy Friday, everyone. Happy weekend. Uh, and super excited. We have some guests here in studio. Uh, we have an audience here in, in studio, uh, and we're very excited. We have the legendary Kathy Maida with us today. Kathy uh, is a longtime community member here in Milford, Pennsylvania, uh, teaching at Shahola Elementary. She's been my kid's PE teacher and a, a fixture there in that school. And uh, she's retiring soon. So she committed to coming on the program. So we're going to talk to Kathy in a minute. Super uh, excited to, to talk to Kathy and her energy and her love for those kids uh, in this community. So um, I do want to thank our sponsor for the program. Rocketbook is our sponsor for the program. And this is the Andrew Murata Surviving and Thriving Rocketbook. If you've watched the show before, you know that they are uh, reusable notebooks and you can uh, put your notes in here. You scan it to your Google Drive. You scan it to your email. You won't lose anything. We just talked about that off air, all these kids losing things. So uh, this is the Andrew Murata Rocketbook. It is on my website. Um, and it's customized for you. So it would be a great Christmas gift. You can order yours today. Thank you to Rocket Book for sponsoring the program. So let's get to it. It's show number 107. Uh, again, if you are watching live, we already have a number of comments and questions here for Kathy uh, from our audience uh, members here. Uh, but show 107, right? So I'm not anywhere near retirement. Most of us educators are not near there, right? Um, but what are we going to be feeling when we're on the eve of our retirements? And what are your students and your staff going to be thinking about you? Are they going to be thrilled that you're leaving? Uh, or are you going to have, uh, you know, people really be heartfelt that you will not be there? Will you be missed, right? And what are the things that we can do as educators to build those relationships with staff, students, and parents, you know, so actually, they really do miss you, right? Uh, people might just say it. And, and you know, the legend of Kathy around Shahola and these parts is real. Uh, but I think about that, right? I don't think about my legacy, but I think about my relationships with other educators. Uh, and, and when my time comes, what will they really think about you when you're gone? And, and I want to make sure that I'm doing those things to build those relationships with kids uh, to make memories. And Kathy has done that in her community. And Kathy um, is on that eve of the uh, of her retirement. So that being said, my challenge to all of you educators that are watching the show live uh, and on replay, continue to do the great things in your schools and communities uh, to build those relationships and to make those special moments for, for people. So that being said, I do want to welcome in our special guest. Come on in, Kathy Maida. A roar from the crowd. <laughs> Come on, tie it in here. Good. Okay. Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. You want to go with the headset sure. or you're going no headset? I'll we'll do with that. All right. Well, let's see how your fans look there. Uh, Kathy, welcome to the program, and, and thank you so much for coming on. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. This is great. This is great. Yeah. We've had a lot of conversations about sports and things like yep. that, but now we actually get to talk about you and your career and your impact. Uh, on that school in the Delaware Valley School District. So my first question, Kathy, like, how are you feeling on the eve of your retirement here just a couple of weeks away? Well, uh, for those of you that know me, um, this has been a real emotional uh, thing to go through. Um, I've been a teacher at Chihola for ever 20, yeah, it seems like <laughs> ever, 20 years, and my whole life other than my family is tied up at that school. And, um, you know, it's, I'm excited for my retirement. I got a two-year-old grandkid I want to spend more time with, but, um, it's going to be hard. It's really going to be hard for me. It's hard already. Yeah. Just thinking about all the memories and the people I've met, friendships I've made. Um, 
Yeah, it's gonna be tough. What what's made it so special? Everyone that talks about Shahola, right? They all kind of say that thing, but you've been such a fabric of that specialness of that place. What is it about Shahola and, and the community there? <clears throat> well, I don't know. I couldn't have asked for a better group of colleagues to work with, from administrators to staff to the parents there are you know, some of my all of my best friends are from Shahola. Um I've been blessed to work with them. They are some of the most, I don't know, dedicated, professional, um, interesting, um, caring, nurturing, whatever you want to say, people I've ever been a part of. Um, and to see what goes on at Chihola when there's a, a crisis with a kid yeah. or a, a tragedy in a family, there's not a better group of people to work on a, on a challenge like that and, you know, We've had some bad things happen uh, to some good people, and we've all kicked in. And it's it's really I have all the um, all the praise in the world to give to my friends and colleagues there. Yeah, it's a great place. Yep, uh, Kathy, we have a lot of family and friends watching, and and again, uh, I'll call it the tribute show here. Um, <laughs> it's been a long career. There's been a lot of ups and downs, but let's talk about you know the good things. Really, some of the highlights you know, over the years, what have been some of the most special things for you? Well, if you ask me every day at Chihola is special. There's always something going on. There's always a challenge to be met. Um, but I think, I, I think this is one of the reasons why we teach, you know, one day I'm sitting in my office and an ex student comes into the gym and this is a student that had a lot of challenges in his early life and had every reason in the world to go, over to the uh, dark side, but he's standing in the gym telling me that he graduated, uh, he's got a job, he's starting a family, and he just wanted to stop by and tell me that I was a big part of that. And He had heard you were retiring? Well, yeah. Oh, and, uh, uh. You know, that's pretty powerful stuff, and I think that's why we all teach is uh, moment for moments like that. Yeah. Kathy, what about all the special things? Like, where the heck did the uh, the hoedown come from? And made the, of madness. And the made of madness, the, the three on three. Like, where did all that come from? You know, it just, it's just what I did. You know, I, I'm like a big kid myself. So I put myself in their position. I came down to their level and tried to think of ideas and, and things that um, they would like to do and promote a healthy, active lifestyle. Um, so, but how did you, where does well, a, for, a okay. country music hoedown that I'm going to teach dancing in the classes and get all these elementary oh, yeah. kids and, dancing? And the hoedown is something yeah, else. It's, um, it's, it's a blast. Yeah. But, well, for example, Made of Madness came out of a need. We we have a week in uh, March, I think it is, or April, where it's uh, screen-free week. Right. Mm -hmm. So you want the kids off the, the technology and the screens or anything for a week, and they sign a pledge to do that. Um, and the reward at the end of the week if, if they accomplish that. But so we wanted to have something after school every day for the kids to do. So that's how Made of Madness is born. I'll get them. I'll take them to the gym. We'll have groups going on around the school and we'll do something fun. And that's how that was born. So there was a need and you know, I just seemed like the natural thing to do. You know, I'm not a classroom teacher per se. I do have health classes, but I didn't have to do all that paperwork and extra stuff that classroom teachers have and all their responsibilities. So I always felt it was my obligation to do things after school, before school, whatever, to give kids an opportunity to stay active and healthy. And then to top off the year, I, I mean, they it's like shutting down Milford. It's bigger than the Milford <laughs> Music Festival. Field Day. Field like, Day. Where did that, how did that grow into such I an just, event? I, I just thought it would be great. To, and then one thing kept leading to another. And before we know it, we had this big, huge, I don't know what you would call it, festival, carnival. But I tell you one thing, we have one of the best PTAs, I think, in, in the school district. You know, I could never have done all these things without, without the parents. Yeah. Um, and you, you've seen it. You've been there. You've you've volunteered that these parents. It's actually, voluntold, right? It's <laughs> like you're you're coming, and that's what it is. Yeah. That's how I yeah. operate. Yeah. Voluntold. So, um, uh, you know, if I hadn't had that backing, some of these things wouldn't happen because it takes a lot of people to pull off what we do, yeah. uh, like an uh, event like um, a field day. I'm gonna miss field day. That's like the big 
that's the big thing. I'm sure we can get you an year. invitation. I, I think <laughs> I think I think there'll be room for you. There. Only if I can bring my grandkid. There you go. <laughs> Um, Kathy, again, these are some of the great events. What's been a challenge, right? They've had some different leadership in there. Yep. Um, you know, you had surgery uh, a couple of years ago. Yep. What's been some challenges or things maybe that you didn't love so much about? Uh, well, technology was always a challenge for me. Just you guys setting this up was. Look at you, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. You uh, yeah. And trying to keep up with that is a challenge to myself and uh, I'm sure everybody. It's a, it's a challenge for school district to keep up with the technology. Um, but, uh, I think technology would be the, um, the most difficult, you know, I rely on a lot of my friends to help me with certain things, your wife or whoever, who's our guidance counselor. And, um, other than that, you know, the challenges are really every day. There's a different challenge. You see a kid that has a need that's not being met and everybody kind of collaborates and tries to take care of the kids. So those are the biggest challenges I think to do the right thing as a team make sure that kid's getting what he needs. Kathy, they, you know, so much today about kids and they're on their screens and they don't, yep. you know, they're yep. inside, they're not playing. You know, have you seen a, a difference in the kids over the years? Or oh, are yeah. you still seeing them, they're playing in the gym? Or do you notice a difference? Maybe they're not, they aren't as they're active. They're not as active. And I think that's, it's not a secret. Um, you know, video games and stuff's very addictive. Yeah. Um, and that's why, I've, you know, I felt obligated to create opportunities for them to stay active and you know my thing was get them to exercise without even knowing they're exercising you know it's not like calisthenics and all that anymore it's uh get them out there get them moving get their heart rate up and then let them become familiar with the um the feelings of the what it feels like to exercise and the benefits of it and get those endorphins flying around their heads and then they look back and they go wow that was a blast and maybe they'll continue on with an active lifestyle that's what what my thing was to get them moving kathy again you got a lot of family and friends watching uh, kayla fine in here says she wrote in the fourth grade oh my god why she kayla. why mrs Maida was your favorite teacher uh, and definitely one of the good ones you know what is it that you think kids would say about you right what what made kathy Maida lovable and a great teacher <laughs> i don't know i just came down to their level and I, I could really relate to kids. You know, I'm a big kid myself and I, I, I did this cause I was having fun. You know, there was a selfish motive in there too. Um, so I hope they just look back and remember the good times and all the fun things we did and, and the lessons I created with my colleagues to, you know, and the events just to have them have fun and get some exercise at the same time. Yeah. You know, I feel like I'm kind of a mentor mentor for their health, uh, healthy lifestyle, well-being, you know, and hopefully going through life, they'll remember that. And it's such a welcoming place. You walk in, you have all the sports posters and the, the Yankee stuff, the Mets stuff, the Giants, the Jets, all of that yep. stuff. Yep. Um, but you want to play when you're in there. You have your little speaker system yep. and your music. You yep. you created an environment where that can happen, and yep. then your energy. Yeah. Right. Is that something that you was did it just come naturally it for did. you to have that it energy? Did. You know, we all, all are born with certain talents and abilities. And, you know, my calling, I guess, was mentoring young kids. And I loved it. I had a blast. It was it was the best. The 20 years at Chola changed my life. It's been, been something else. I'll never forget the people yeah. involved. Well, you've changed a lot of lives. Uh, and, again, people are uh, leaving comments here about uh, their love for you and, and your love for the kids. Um, Kathy, you know, you're working with a young uh, colleague right now, just starting out his career, um, Coach Quinn. Yep. You know, what, what would be some advice that you, you would give to young teachers starting out? I mean, you had a very successful career. Yep. What this would, what is, this is second advice? career, so um, I haven't been there really that long in terms of a teacher. But um, I would tell a new teacher, Start contributing to your 403B right away. Right away. <laughs> because one day you're going to be where I am and you need money to live. <laughs> and um, second of all, I'd say, you know, again, we're all born with different talents and abilities and qualities. And you need to find your calling and you need to share that with the world around you and make it a better place. And I just was blessed to be doing something I love to do. Love to do it. And um, 
It was great. What what did you do first, Kathy? What was the first? I was in sales. I sold sports medicine products to school districts nationwide, sports teams, baseball teams, football teams, that type of thing. Okay. So I was in, in the sports business a little and, bit. And did you know that that's not what you wanted to do? Is it? Was, did you not have a passion there? No, I loved it because I'm a big sports fan, and I was around all the trainers and the coaches and uh, down at the stadiums. Um, but, you know, we moved here from Westchester, New York, um, about in 89. Um, so my husband could start a business, and one thing led to another, and I ended up finishing going back to school to get my teaching credential up and then got hired and coached, and the rest is history. And here we are. And here we are, and I get to hang out with people like you. <laughs> Kathy, awesome. I, I got a nickname, a lot of Marada, and uh, <laughs> that has grown over the years. Would you say like when you started that it was like, bam, or did this energy level and did this just excitement for teaching and learning and the kids, were you like that when you started? Yep. That kind of Right out of the uh, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask some of the people that were there when I started, I think they'd tell you the same thing. Um, I just go and do it and... I loved it. And it just kept going, going, going. Yeah. And, and we joke, we're half joking, but half serious. You and I, we say we're blessed with, you know, the energy of ADD, right? <laughs> and that, you know, just well, that energy, ha, ha, has that helped you in your career? Like, is that something that's helped you? You think it's something that kind of you learned how to deal with and you, you know, your weak points? Well, you know, when I was a kid, they didn't know, they didn't have a name for what I was. <laughs> ADD, you know, now they, mm -hmm. now we do. But, you know, I've been told, by someone that ADD is a superpower. Mm -hmm. So if ADD is a superpower, does that make me a superhero? I I've would, always wanted to be one. <laughs> I would certainly say that, and as well as our people but would. The, uh, but the would ADD say that. definitely helped with the energy. Yeah. Um, you know, you got things to do, you want to do, and I was blessed to have that. But when you walk in the gym. Well, it's organized chaos, though. It's not. It's organized chaos. You're, yes. you're organized. You blow the whistle. You 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 got the. Yeah, you're getting them going there. That's not. It's well, not just like a free for all. No, some yeah. some people would say that, but I know what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> it's organized chaos. But that's how kids are. Uh, you know, they're in a classroom all day long. They should be able to come into that gym and go ballistic for yeah, a few course, minutes. Yeah. You know, get the yayas out. That's how I always looked at it. I don't want them sitting down. Um, I try to keep talking to the minimum and get them out there. They only get thirty minutes. Yeah. So. And Kathy, like. You know, I've seen you in action and I've seen that energy. And I, I, I mean, we joke, but I do say it's a superpower and you are a superwoman. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Kathy, what about the big picture of education? We're, we're narrowed in on Shahola, the culture, the great things that you've done. The bigger picture, there's a lot of kind of yep. negativity around it. And, and, yep. and uh, you know, the show and people like you were trying to bring positivity and positive yep. stories to it. What would you say are your feelings now? about the big picture of education and where we should be going? Well, it's certainly changed in the 20 years that I've been there. Um, and I'm sure you feel the same way when you first started out. Um, there's so many more things we have to be concerned about, um, more challenges to face. Um, it's no secret there are many challenges facing um, education, and the least of which are, um, you know, re uh, recruiting and re um, keeping te good, Retention. competent teachers, um, socioeconomic factors, technology, and it's changing so quickly, um, parent involvement or lack thereof, yeah. um, all sorts of things. I don't. I couldn't do your job. I don't think I have the stomach for it. The decisions and challenges you face every day are just incredible. Um, I like to stay safe in my little world in the gym and I don't have to make those big decisions. But, um, you know, teachers are the backbone of this country and they should be respected and treated like they are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, people like you have raised the bar, right. And made it like a rock star. People look at you and <laughs> there might be a kid that says, I want to be a rock star because you are in the eyes of these people. Um, but you're right. There, there should be a level a higher of respect. Um, Kathy, another thing we're seeing, or at least paying more attention to, because they were there when we were younger too, but the kids with trauma in their lives oh, and man. what it what yep. it brings. Do you see those kids um, getting a benefit from PE and when they're in oh, your in absolutely. your world, right? They have so many bad things yep. going on, but then when they get to you, yep. 
you have a chance to let them play, right? Well, and they they can um, they can express themselves and they can um, feel good about themselves. You know, there's nothing better than a smile on a kid's face when they figure out something in there or or they contribute to winning a game with their team or, you know, give them the self-confidence they need to in all walks of life. Um, there's nothing better than, you know, seeing that kid. Um, and, you know, when those kids come to school, we don't always know the baggage that they're bringing. We don't know what they, you know, if they even got breakfast in the morning yeah. or if anybody said they loved them. And, um you know, they get to school and, and they need that. They need to be nurtured. They need to be seen. They need to be heard. They need to be validated. Um, and they need good role models. And hopefully I was one. And you do that all in the first 30 seconds of seeing each kid as they pull up. You I, greet them. You hug them. You greet the parents. I am, you sit in the front seat. <laughs> you know. I will miss doing drop-off duty because I do get to communicate with the parents and um but I'm not going to miss the cold. Yeah. It gets cold out there. <laughs> yeah. You have your, your gear, right? You got have my gear. Your stuff. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we certainly know you would like a golf cart, right? You know, on field day, you get to drive around the yep. golf cart. If Dr. Bell, your superintendent, would say, Mrs. Maida, as a retirement gift, we are going to buy <laughs> something on the campuses, you know, and they gave you a blank check. Jeez. What would you want to leave? Or what do you think that the district needs or the kids need? What would you, what would you leave? Boy. You didn't give me that. That wasn't on the list. I threw that one Um, in. Little curveball. Boy, I don't know. Uh, I've always wanted a rock climbing wall. Did you hear that, Doctor Bell? I've tried to (laughs) to uh, approach that a couple times, and it you know there's a lot involved in the buildings and stuff like that. But um, we just got a a gaga pit built at Chihola by an Eagle Scout. They love the gaga. Really proud about that. Uh, that would be a great addition to any playground. Um, just more opportunities to um, for kids to play and be kids. You know, they grow up so fast these days. It's it's um, they don't get as much time to be a kid, and that's really important. Again, if our viewers are watching live, you want to leave us a question. There's a lot uh, of great comments voice. here. To Fle- Mike Fleming, he was on here. Uh, again, Kay this year. That's great. Uh, Diana Bixby, uh, Ann Fagan, great yep. teacher yep. Uh, there. A positive comment. Eagle Witz, one of my guys. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, That's really cool. Well, and yep. in addition to the comments here, Kathy, we did have a couple of the teachers at school uh, you know, write a little something. I don't know if this is safe to read. You know, uh, Jess Stokes, the great music teacher, right? Since the beginning of my time at, at Shahola, Kathy has always been a source of enthusiasm, passion, and unending love. How nicely written. That could be a song. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, Kathy is generous at creating ties with the community, not just for the interim period, but ties that last through generations. Kathy's love wow. for her students and her school are tangible. Everyone knows this deep in their bones. In short, <laughs> Kathy Maida is a living legend. She wow. will be sorely missed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what it's what like how do you right a lot of people watching her in education what are the things that you did to build relationships that people would say things this about you well i throw that right back at jess she's one of the best teachers i've ever known um and as a specialist teacher um you know we we really work together on different activities and um meeting the needs of some of the kids maybe giving them extra gym time giving them extra music time whatever they need uh, to help them. We work, uh, we have a lot of special kids at our school. Um, and we take a lot of pride in, in working with them and we all work together from the nurse, the secretary, to the guy, to your lovely wife and one of the coolest persons on the planet. <laughs> uh, cause she, when I need guiding, that's where counseling. I am. I can be found. In, she has a period of yeah, counseling for me. There's a chair right there for me. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I've just been blessed to work with these people and, um, for the most part, I think most of the teachers are re- are really thought of in the same vein. I'd throw that right back, okay. right back to Joss. Well, and your partner here, uh, Mr. Quinn, was lucky to work with you here. <laughs> Who just had a baby. Uh, he uh, he says here, the legend of Maida is real and it's incredible. The power of love for your students oh, will guide thanks, the way Kev. and her teaching will come. This is the biggest token I've taken from my time with her. I will miss her, but I will call her for the field of advice <laughs> yeah. for sure. Um, yeah, I think he's worried about field day. <laughs> you know, he writes here, Kathy gets the entire community to show up and donate their time and materials, right? Shake them down. I shake them down. Uh, Kathy sets up what I would <laughs> compare to PE teachers amusement park for field day. 
It runs smoothly. And once again, it's centered around love and the love of the students. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a big, big party for the kids. Made of Madness, Intramural, Student Council, Three on Three, the Basketball Tournament, <laughs> Hoop Shoot, Veterans Day Assembly, along with other things I'm probably forgetting. Yeah. That's a lot to account. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss a lot. You know, every time I've uh, known I was going to retire and had my last field day or my last this or my last Veterans Day, just, uh, you know, it was hard. I was going to miss it a lot. Yeah. They were all part of, of uh, what I love to do. And, Kathy, all these great things at Shahola, right? One of the things I stress on this program – your own wellness, right? And your daughter's yep. here. You have your grandchild. Yep. But when you stepped away from Shahola, summers and weekends, I know golf is a big part of your life. What are the things that you did to sharpen the saw, right? To make Kathy May to have that energy. What are some things that, that you did that really in, in, inspired you outside of school? I have a good therapist. <laughs> that always helps. Um, but I like to golf and hike. Um, my ears. Audiobooks. Audiobooks. Audio, audiobooks. Audiobooks. Oh, I was going to answer that in another question. <laughs> um, uh, I spend time with my grandkid, but um, when I get away, I just try to be by myself and regroup, focus. Um, tried yoga. I'm not really into that. I tried it a couple of times. It just doesn't seem to fit with me. But, um, you know, I try to take care of myself best I can. That gets harder and harder to do as you get older. Mm -hmm. So um, when I re when I finally retired, I plan on sleeping, recouping, and moving forward. Very cool, Kathy. A lot of friends and uh, community members again. You know what would be your, your message here, right? Uh, you know, shout outs. Is there a, a, uh, a message that you would like to give to the community? Well, first of all, the community has been a big part of what I do. I couldn't have done it without them, and. You people know who you are. Love you to death. And uh, I'll never forget the friendships I made and the people I met. And the uh, unbelievably, incredibly talented, um, caring people that I got to work with up at Shahola. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget them. Yeah. Something you, else. you brought those people in. If they, you well, know, if that energy, that positive energy, people wanted to be a part of those things, to, to be close to the legend, well, they, right? they wanted to do things for the kids, and that's what it's all about, right? I think they what, wanted to do it for you, too, right? That's great. I appreciate yeah. that. You know, I couldn't have done it without them. You know, it's about finding what makes these kids tick and then making sure they get it because um, sometimes they're not getting that outside of the school. But it takes a special person, right? I, I've always enjoyed coming to the three-on-three -three and, and, like, which but you I volunteer for. But I didn't want to let you down, right? Because I know what you yeah. want for the kids. Well, I, and, hope, and, you know, I and, hope you'd feel that if you needed something from me, I'd be right there for you. Too. Well, here you are on my yeah. program. Right? <laughs> I asked you, and here you are. So there well, you go. I would do anything for you, Mr. Yeah. Rob. Yeah. I love your family. Well, you know this that. is great. And again, please keep the comments coming. Uh, so many people had great things to say here. Uh, wow. You know. Uh, Cindy. Wow. Yeah, I haven't talked to Cindy. Cindy Stein and Tammy Lynn Warsaw. Uh, yeah. Janet Rosansky, she's here, uh, and Jessica Stokes. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. That's awesome. So, <laughs> Technology's great, isn't it? Even though I don't understand it. It's all right. It's all good. <laughs> Kathy, one of the favorite parts of the programs are the rapid fire is questions. Is this like the 90, 90 feet thing? This is it. Okay. This is it. And I'm going to have some curveballs in there, so oh, stay geez. with me, okay. right? Uh, last book you read. Llama Llama Red Pajama with my uh, grandson, Leo, who's two. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's not on my list, but maybe it'll, we'll get on there. Uh, last movie you saw. I know Frozen is out tonight. We're up against competition. Of Frozen. Do I look like uh, someone who would go see Frozen? With your girls? Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, the, actually, the last movie I saw, which is the greatest movie ever made, was The Sandlot. Mm, you're killing me. Small. I've seen it a million times. Favorite place to travel? The United States. And I look forward to doing some more of that. Where? where Just in everywhere. Like to go warm, to national or? parks. Oh, yeah. Stuff you guys do. We love the parks. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Um, the greatest challenge you've had, Kathy. Again, we spoke about technology, but maybe on a day where you, you were, you know, what was something that that got to you? You know, when you have a kid that's in trouble, I mean, meaning that he's got a lot of challenges, and you know, he's not getting help outside of the school, and you feel so bad, and you just want to take him home and uh, take care of them mm -hmm. 
and you, you can only give them so much at school. And if, um, we just recently had a kid who has been in and out of uh, foster homes and he was back with a relative and now he's back and he got taken out of our school and mm -hmm. you were just making some headway and then, you know, chaos ensues in their lives and you wonder how these kids are ever going to ever get through it. So stuff like that's really, yeah. it tears your heart out. It does. You're yeah. right. Uh, how about a pet peeve, right? I know. Oh. Don't bounce the ball. Don't bounce I, the ball when you're talking. I love that. That, that is a pet peeve. Yeah. Cause if you had, you know, eight hours of people bouncing balls in the gym, you would say that too. You know, you go home, your head's going like this, right? But uh, my best, my pet peeve is, is when people don't drive with their lights on. That just drives me up a wall. Do you give them the blink? I do. do you give and some blink? of them just look at me funny. But especially like I was driving home from school yesterday and it's kind of dark already and it's raining and they're driving. The windshield wipers go like this and the lights aren't on. It's so, it's so much safer to drive all the time with your lights on, day or night, but that's a pet peeve. Yeah. My daughter will attest to that. Yeah. She's like embarrassed every time I... Sarah, what else? What else drives her crazy? What drives her crazy? Yeah. When people don't speak correctly. Oh, yes. English language. She corrects people's language when they constantly. Use, when they add, when adverbs become adjectives and they don't add L-Y to the end of the word. And you know where I get that from? My mom used to correct us all the time. I thought she was crazy. <laughs> and now it drives me up a wall. And then you hear authors or... Uh, news people on Podcasters. TV or even writers, <laughs> writers of books like James Patterson aren't, aren't using the L-Y at the end of drives me up a wall. I never knew you had such uh, grammatical. Uh, I'm uh, not uh, just a gym I, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, best purchase under a hundred dollars that has had a great impact on your life. Uh, pop socket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I was t asking Sarah what I should say because I, I couldn't think of anything. Yeah. And, Hit me today as I. It helps you hold the phone. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Unbelievable. You're good with technology. Yeah, you're right. Not really. Not really. Something about Kathy Maida that people do not know about. I'm addicted to audiobooks. I listen to them all the time. Yeah. I'll go to the gym and I'll sit in the parking lot for an hour because I don't want to turn the book off. What's the genre you like? Um, mysteries, detective, you know, anything with James Patterson or. Um, Childs, Lee Childs. Uh, you like the voices too, the guys that read it, right? They have the yeah, best voices. And, you know, for those of you that listen to audios books, sometimes you know, if you don't like the voice, you don't read the book. I hear you. You don't listen to it. Uh, it depends on who the reader is. Did you like John Feinstein? You listen to Feinstein's book, the I sports do. author? Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's good too. Yeah. Mostly non uh, fiction, though. You know, okay. I like to lose myself in a story. So she's going to get a lot of retirement <laughs> gifts. I don't know how you can buy her an audio book, but uh, uh, that's no, they're free at the library, so you don't need okay. to purchase those. You're dating yourself. <laughs> if you, <laughs> I, I still go to the library. Cassette tapes. Uh, if you had a billboard with a message on it, what would the message be? Let go and let God. Try to live my life like that. I learned that from a very special friend. Kathy, what's been a, a hurdle for you? Boy, uh, when I was sick, you know, I was one point I uh, was sick and I had to miss about half a year. And that was a struggle for me to just to finally admit that I had to shut it down to get better. I kept yeah. getting sick and then come back. I'd get sick, come back. Um, and, uh, you know, I just I got to go to school. I got to go to school. I got to be at school. I need to go to school. And it wasn't working. Mm. So I had to listen, you have to listen to your body. And when it's time to check out, it's time to check out. And you got to give it a rest. And I did that and came back and, you know, and now that's one of the reasons I'm retiring. It's, it's time. I don't have the energy that I used to have. Um, and it's time to do a few things that I need to do. We're only here so long. So, so the retirement's in a couple of months, February 3rd, uh, February 3rd is the official date. It's yep. going to be in Pike County national, uh, <laughs> Kathy made a day, no. but, uh, like what are some short term goals, right? You have the spring here in front of us. You mentioned your grandson. Yep. What are some short term goals of things that you want to do? Well, just rest and sleep and recoup. Um, then I got to figure out what to do in the long run. Um, you know, I, I believe God has a plan for everybody. Mine was mentoring kids and now what that'll be that plan going forward. I, I'm not sure. Um, I just got to be ready to hear it when it comes. And um, I just hope it includes my golf clubs and my hiking boots and my kayak and a beach chair and my grandkids and my family. Very nice. Here's Louis Lukabek, Mrs. Maid, and Nicole Edmonds uh, and I say hi. She misses wow. you. Yeah.
That's great. Kathy, three to five years, right? You'll be retired yep. for a number of years. Yep. Leo will be uh, eight, eight, eight years old. You know, well, where do you see, do you, you see yourself moving out of the area? Where do you? I think to warmer climate, although I, I love Milford and all my friends are here. Um, but, you know, it's, it's harder with my husband and I both have arthritis and the, the cold takes its toll. Yeah. And we um, we like to do summer things, golf and hike, kayak and um, with the kids and everything. Um, I want to teach my grandson how to play golf and any other kids from my other child over there when they arrive. Um, we still got to get her hooked, though. Mm -hmm. hooked up. Is so, that a commercial for Sarah? You want to yeah. come over? I have a boyfriend. I oh, she's got a boyfriend. Oh, she's got a boyfriend. Yeah. 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 yeah, she's got I don't a boyfriend. I don't even live at home anymore. <laughs> but your clothes are still at the house. <laughs> Uh, right. Kathy, a, a sporting event. You're a huge sports fan. A yep. sporting Love event it. that is on the list of somewhere you haven't been. Oh, the Final Four. Yep. Okay. And the Masters. Okay. Um, that would be a nice retirement yes, gift if you're watching, right? Yeah. You you know, connections. It's expensive to go to the you Masters. You have a lot of friends. I have a CBS friend, and he can't even get me into the mm -hmm. Masters. <laughs> Ted, Ted Dabney's watching. Maybe he'll fly. Dabney. You, but, you know? <laughs> Um, what has been a great sporting event that you've gone to that has been memorable for you? Oh, boy. Um, I saw Sandy Koufax pitch a 14 strikeout game. Wow. You know, I grew up in Los Angeles, outside of L.A., and Grandpa used to take us to the Dodger games all the time. So I saw greats like Koufax and Willie May, uh, uh, Maury Wills and Don Drysdale and um, – you still Fernando live. Valenzuela. Val you, well, no, that you, was this. You're we're talking the '60s, okay? okay? '60s and '70s. Um, so I got to see a lot of um, a lot of famous sports people back in the day, um, and I still think have those fond memories of going to those games. Uh, Grandpa had uh, like company tickets to Dodger Stadium, so we used to go. That's all not the a bad perk, yeah. It's a great stadium. If Leo could grow up. To like an athlete you would admire, you know, who would you want him to grow up to be like? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Wasn't on the list. Yeah, um, one to admire. I, I'd have to say the Manning brothers. I think they're pretty yeah. good role models for athletes. Um, the way they lived their lives, conducted their mm -hmm. conducted their business while they're mm -hmm. in front of the media all the time. Um, Haven't heard a negative word. Not from a negative Eli, word. Right? He got benched. No. Not a peep. Right? Not a peep. He handled mm -hmm. that like a mm -hmm. like a charm. Yeah. He's great. They're great, great players. Oh, sorry. Oh. Technology here. Yeah. Uh, so, Kathy, we're at the end of the program here. You did a phenomenal job. Thank you. You, 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 you know, you were afraid you were going to cry a little more. Yeah, um, I held it together. For those of you that know me know that I can cry at a drop of a pin. So. This has been great, uh, but you have a couple more months. So when you when you go to work here now? 46 days left, working days. Do you Are you, are you going in there a little differently? Are you trying to yes. maybe absorb you know, things a little more? I am in that I finally got. My last big event done, made it madness, better and stay. I got my observation done for my evaluation. All the big stuff's over with. So I'm just trying to sit back and enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to be stressed out about anything else. I got what I needed to get done, done. And I'm not blowing off the rest of the 48, 46 days, but I want to sit back and enjoy it. Mm. And, um, you know, every day something something reminds me of how blessed I've been to work at Chihola. Um, and a shout out to all my peeps and parents and um, you know who you are. And um, I'll never forget you. Yeah. Yeah. A ton of people watching here. And uh, please leave us some comments. Kathy will read those. And uh, this has been a great tribute. You did great Thanks, here. Buddy. And uh, yeah, it's been great to have you on. Let me cue this music up. Guys, this is Kathy Maida. Again, 46 days before that retirement. She'll be around, <laughs> though. Um, People have your email. People yep. have your cell phone. They know right? how to get a hold of you. They know how to get a hold of you. Um, but if you do, you know, want, want to reach out to Kathy, you, what, you go, if you don't have her number, you want to go through me or, or you know, we'll get you in touch with her. But she is at yep. Chihola. Uh, she's been a great uh, mentor and friend to me, uh, you know, and you've really been a role model. Uh, so I, those young educators that are watching, you know, you're hoping you could do things to have people write and say things about you like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty special. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go have some pizza. All right. Sounds we're gonna good. we're Thanks. gonna sign off here on education, leadership, and beyond. If I could get the music going, there we go. Yep. Uh, this is the great Kathy Maida. I am uh, at Andrew Murata twenty one on Twitter. No Twitter account. But yeah. You're, but you're on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah.
Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And Thank you. Uh, continue to go out and change the world for the better. Kathy made it certainly happen. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. You did good. That was good. How was yeah. it? We're still on. Oh. <laughs> you, got, you got to have a little bit of it in. Okay. It's okay. A lot of people here. Hey, Reagan. For, Megan. For, uh, wrinkle. Gosh, I haven't. Aaron somebody, Hamilton. This is great because I haven't thought of some of these people in a long time. Ted Dabney. How about a free flight, Ted? Right. <laughs> Can you fly me to the Masters, Dabney? See you, everyone. <laughs>